Hey guys, what's going on? It's your old pal CHH. Come on in. I'm going to sit down. We're just going to talk podcast style on this review today. We've got some new movies to review on 4K and talk to you guys about. We've got The Convent from Synapse, finally with uh, out the slipcover, which is apparently, you know, makes it really, really pricey. And then we've got Dark Knight of the Scarecrow 1 and 2 double feature. So which one are we going to start with first? Let's start with Dark Knight of the Scarecrow 1 and 2. So this was really cool because I have Dark Knight of the Scarecrow on DVD. I have this release right here. I had got this from my Still Act, the video store, which I've done many videos on. I had the DVD of this, which does not look very, very good. And this was from VCI Entertainment. So not the uh, not the um, nicest label. I, I don't think I've ever heard of VCI Entertainment. Um I wonder if they did this as well. Yeah, this is still VCI. Wow, that's still VCI. This was put out from the good folks with, with MVD. Um, and it's funny when I talk to my guy who, because uh, this was, this, these are, you know, these were sent to me to review. <laughs> when he sent me both of these, what's funny is he says, be honest. We don't need you to lie. You could be totally honest about these. Um, I, and I'll tell you the one I definitely think you should go for. Between the two. So, Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. I love Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. Dark Knight of the Scarecrow was a made-for-TV movie, and I think it came out in the early 80s. Um, it definitely has an early 80s vibe. I think so. Yeah, 81, I think. So, Dark Knight of the Scarecrow is really nice. It's it's really a nice little campfire movie, and the plot of it's nice and simple. Basically, you've got uh, Bubba, who is played by Larry Drake, and he has this... Sweet little relationship with this girl. Now, Bubba is kind of a slower guy. And, you know, he's kind of looked at as, you know, look, it was the early 80s, so what can you say? But they have a sweet relationship. But there's an accident that happens, and Bubba gets blamed for this girl uh, being injured. Uh, people think at first she died when she got attacked by a dog, but really she just kind of got scratched up and she passed out. But in the midst of all this, the group of townspeople decide that they're going to take justice into their own hands, so they take him out. He's dead. Um, so what happens is Bubba hides in the Scarecrow outfit, but they realize that's him in there. So then they gun him down, and they blast his ass. I mean, they shoot him, like, I don't know, 15 times. He is a bloody mess. But fate would have it that Bubba is going to come back. So... It's a fun, spooky little movie. It's a great kind of like an after-school horror film. It's a horror film, but uh, but it's obviously not something that's going to freak you out. Um, but I like I like Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. At the very least, you need to have it. Um, but this is a 4K of Part 1 and 2. The 4K for Part 1 looks good, but the reality is... It looks like a really good Blu-ray. It doesn't look like the best 4K you're going to see this year. I'm not going to blame anybody on this. I, I think, you know... You know, it, it's probably, it, it, it says this on here, you know, for the first time ever, both films have, be, have been remastered on the ultimate video format 4K, uh, looking their best ever. I don't know what this movie was filmed on. Um, it looks good, don't get me wrong, but it's not going to be the best 4K you've seen this year. And it's 4.3 because it's a television movie, which shouldn't come as a surprise to most of you reading, uh, watching this. But, uh, yeah, so the movie, uh, the Dark Knight of the Scarecrow movie, I love it. I, I'd give it two thumbs up. It's a great, charming, uh, after-school kind of special horror film. Um, <laughs> the sequel, here's what, like, the thing about the first movie, and this is why the first movie works. Obviously, it's taking this relationship with uh, Larry Drake and, and, and the girl and the story of revenge of getting back to on the people that killed him. In the sequel, there's really nothing like that going on. You've got these people that come into town, and the scarecrow just kind of kills people. Um, the only th and it's it's silly, it's ridiculous, um, it's a bad movie. What can I say about part two? It's funny because when you go online and you read about part two, there's everybody says this. This is a sequel literally nobody asked for. But I think, you know, there is never going to be just a Dark Knight of the Scarecrow 4K release. You have to get part two to get part one, which is a good business move. Let's be real. Most people are going to want to have Dark Knight of the Scarecrow in 4K, so they'll get this. But then you got to get part two as well. Uh, the funny thing, too, about part two is it's actually a really good looking 4K. <laughs> the movie looks like super sharp. Uh, but you'll watch it once in your life 
and as opposed to part one, well, you'll probably go back and revisit this every couple of years. And uh, for kids, this would be great as well. But I love Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. I remember getting this. I remember getting this movie maybe 10 years ago watching this and just enjoyed it. I, I love it. It's a great, charming little horror film. So this release does have a number of special features. Let's look on the back of that real quick. We've got uh, 2023 uh, Dark Knight of the Scarecrow triple fan commentary hosted by Heath Holland, Serial Midnight Podcast. Robert Kelly, noted film historian and Amanda Ray's expert on TV movies, author and podcaster. We have the original Dark Knight of the Scarecrow commentary track with writer J.D. Feigelson and director Frank DeFalita. De uh, we have the new 2023 Dark Knight of the Scarecrow 2 commentary by J.D. Feigelson. A video featurette, Bubba Didn't Do It, 30 Years of the Scarecrow by Daniel Griffith. Uh, the video featurette, Dark Knight of Scarecrow, cast reunion Q&A recorded at the 2011 Fright Fest Film Festival. We have a video feature, 1981 CBS World premiere broadcast promo, and a video feature, 1985 CBS Network rebroadcast promo, photo galleries, and behind the scenes. So the cool thing about this release, too, is it is region-free, but most 4Ks are, um, and you'll have two discs, the... First one is the movies, and then the second disc is the movies and the special features, bonus features. So you'll get the commentaries on the 4K disc. If you want to watch it with the commentaries, you can do that. So, yeah, guys, there's that one. That's the Dark Knight of Scarecrow one. And this one, this is an interesting release. The Convent. Now, I'm going to say this about the movie. I actually like the movie. It is a ridiculously 90s feeling movie. Uh, I think it came out in 2000, I think. But, I mean, come on. That's like American pop. It's it's you've got the scent. It's got American pie vibe all over it. Um, it's basically, you know, there was this satanic cult stuff that was going on in this building years later. It's Halloween. The place is supposedly haunted. So a group of kids go in there and they're going to raise hell and be mischievous and bang each other and all that sort of stuff. Uh, as these kids go in there, you know, you've got the goth girl who goes in her own direction stereotypical stuff that you would see from that time she gets possessed turns into a ghoul there's a boston terrier in this movie that i love so much uh this movie's got joanna canton coolio and adrian barbeau adrian barbeau you don't really get till the latter part of the movie but she's awesome when you see it the best part of the movie is definitely when the kids get caught in the building in the beginning of the film and Bill Mosley and Coolio are the cops and Coolio just eats up the scene. Um, he understands he's not an actor and he understands he's not a good actor. So he just goes for silliness and I love it. And he calls everybody white boy in the scene. It's so funny. That scene is hysterical and him and Bill Mosley, like they're joking and laughing. That's a funny part. This is an okay horror comedy. Uh, I like it. It's not a great movie by any stretch of the imagination, but if you're into the 90s feel and horror comedies with actually some decent makeup effects stuff in here, uh, it's worth a watch. And this is, I think, maybe the first time this might have ever come out on home video. It might have got a VHS or something, but I was reading the back of this. They were making it sound like, you know, this is the movie's, definitely the movie's, uh, it's uncensored U.S. debut Um Basically, the movie was gone for a long time. Has long been available on disc. So maybe it got a VHS and might have got a DVD initially, but it hasn't been around in a long time. I'd never heard of the convent, quite frankly. But um, this release, you get a... Let's see. You do get a, a small booklet on the making of the film in here, which is nice. Um, got that. You've got your 2024 product catalog. I wonder if they have anything about trick-or-treat in here. No, they do not. They do not. And then you've got your two discs. You've got your Blu-ray disc, and you've got your 4K disc. And I believe you can reverse the art. Let's do that. Um, there were some funny moments in this. My wife actually enjoyed this movie more than me. Um, but it, it's a it's it's very much a horror comedy. They really go for the comedy aspect on this, which I don't know if that's going to turn people off or not. Um, for me, I love horror comedy, so... Yeah, you can reverse the art to this, which is, I believe, what the slipcover is. Here, here's the thing. This was a good release, and here's the bonus features on this. 4K remaster of the uncut version, supervised and approved by director Mike Mendez. The 4K of this looked pretty good. I don't know if they were using the actual original negative, because neither of these are going to be the 4Ks of the year. That I can tell you. They're, they look good, but neither of these are going to be 4Ks of the year in picture quality. 
Uh, but it did look good. Uh, I would say it'd be like a 6.8 out of 10 in terms of restoration work. Master and Dolby Vision, HDR10 compatible, 5.1 stereo surround mix from the original 16-track audio masters, cast and crew audio commentaries, Lords of Hell audio commentary featuring Saul and Dickie Boy, video tour of both the Convent and Killers film locations, vintage making of featurette, vintage original stereo electronic press kit and EPK, it's always something with a virgin, liner notes from Corey Dana, deleted scenes, gore outtakes, still galleries, and promotional trailers. So... Between these two, the movie that I like the most is definitely Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. Um, I think more people would probably enjoy The Convent, though, because this is definitely something that's really like a kid's introduction horror movie. It'd be something they could watch um, when they're getting a little bit older. Uh, But I think more people will like The Convent. It's raunchier. It's sleazier. There's definitely some fun moments in this one for sure. You get your Legends. You get your Adrian Barbeau. You get your Bill Mosley. And you get Coolio. Who doesn't love Coolio? Um, The thing is, go for the best price on these releases. Make sure that they're good prices. This, I'm happy to have this. Um, And I'm lucky. You know, I do get to review this one. But I can't lie to you guys and say pay a lot of money for this. Synapse, I really don't know what they were smoking offering this for $50 with a slipcover. $50. I mean, guys, what is going on? Like, I think I'm pretty sure Opera was only a little bit more than that with five discs and a booklet and all the cut, like the different cuts of the movie. But that's kind of okay. But guys, like $50 when you guys had this initially released? How nice of a slipcover was it? Did, did I mean, what, what, what are we talking about here? So get this, get these at good prices is what I'm saying. And if you're familiar with these films, then you can kind of already tell which way to go. Both look good. Neither of them are great. I'm excluding even talking about, like I said, the 4K of part two actually looked pretty good. You know, part one looks okay, but it's a TV movie. Remember that? It looks good. It's very much a high def look. And this one looks, like I said, good, but it's not 4K of the year. I don't know what kind of, if they used an interpositive or what. It doesn't say uh, from the negative. It just says 4K remaster of the uncut version supervised by the director, which is good. So there you have it, guys. Check the prices on these and see what you guys think. Uh, but yes, yeah, Synapse, don't ever charge $50 for, for a movie with a slipcover that's like this. I mean, it better be thick, nasty, with booklets and everything before you guys do that again. I love you, Synapse. I really do. You guys are awesome. Like, you guys have a great catalog. I love you, Synapse. But please don't do that anymore. Please. Uh, so there you have it, guys. Dark Knight of the Scarecrow and The Convent are two new releases that are out right now. Uh, let me know if you're a fan of either of those films and if you're planning on picking up either of those guys. This is your pal, CHH. God bless you. Take care, and I'll see y'all next time. Huge, giant thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Without you guys, this would not be possible. To get behind-the-scenes photos, videos, music, private live streams, and much more, you can subscribe to my Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. Thank you to my patrons.